the next day. I'm in my Christmas rain gear onesie. Let's go. Aries. Main takeaway for Aries. One, there's a trine between Venus and Uranus <clears throat> between the 22nd and the 23rd of December. So good for you. But here's the rub. If you can put your stubbornness aside, huge things are possible. If you can put your stubbornness aside and be accountable, enormous leaps forward are possible. So what that means in a job setting, for example, is not any longer looking at your current situation in the context of how you got here, acknowledging it, but not viewing it through those eyes anymore, but instead taking full accountability for your part of where you are right now. And then using that as a platform to jump off of and move forward in a really empowered way. But if you are stubborn, <clears throat> you can lose irreplaceable connections, irreplaceable work connections, family connections, friendship connections. The more intractable you are, the more you stand to lose. Taurus. You have been building towards this feeling of it's now or never, you're on your Elvis bullshit, you want to give people ultimatums, you want to tell them exactly how it is, it's concrete, it's written in stone, and Taurus does go through these periods where you are very, you know, it's when you're fed up, it's when you're, it's when you're fed up, but it's also when you're super elated and happy and you want to hold on to what you have. You know, whether it's a positive reaction or a negative reaction, the action is the same, which is that I need to secure what is mine. But ultimatums are not the way to security. Uh, they won't work on you and they will not work coming from you. And you will very much want to push that particular energy. You want to tell people like, I will walk. Or, you know, if I don't get A, then B will be the... And surprisingly, no one will go for it because you're not coming from a place of... Well, I'm not saying you're not justified, but you're trying to, in a very strong, bullheaded way, gloss over something that I think you don't want to deal with. And so it's easier to try to secure something by force. And that never works, yeah. Okay. We already did Gemini. Okay, let's move to Virgo. So, by the same token, like what we just talked about with Taurus, it's very similar with Virgo in that you are flexible and you get more and more and more for it. The less stubborn you are, the more open you are to new types of people, saying yes to invitations that maybe you wouldn't have in the past, just being really open-minded will put you in situations and around people that make you really happy and you can feel a very romantic energy in the air. You can feel your romantic luck picking up, but it's so steady and stable. Thank you, Mercury and Capricorn, that it doesn't scare you and it doesn't make you feel like running away and it doesn't fill you with this like, you know, age old Virgo anxiety of getting too close or getting tethered to someone or something. It's so much more pleasant than that. It's something that you naturally want to hook yourself to because it makes you feel grounded and it, it brings out this sense of worthiness in you that I think you chase. Um, you know, so many Virgos that I know and I know so many, they would be so content with just a deep sense of security, whether it's financial or emotional, probably both. But like if they could just attain a certain number, a certain feeling, they could really just relax into that. The rub there is that that doesn't exist the way they wish it did. 
you know, if there's any slight imperfection, if there's any sort of hiccup, it seems as if the vision was really fragile glass to begin with because it's just shattered. Um, and that says a lot to the rigidity and the intractable nature that Virgo can have, that all earth signs can have. And what you have to, the only thing really that can hold you back right now is that everything else is smoothed away. You have a lot of very interesting activity going on in your house of communication and work. And uh, it's just, it's so exciting. And all you have to do to experience it is be open. You don't have to make a lot of effort. And when you come across someone, probably mid-December, that you're like, wow, I didn't expect to actually have an amazing holiday season, but this is going swimmingly. Just remember, you know, what I said. Just keep going with the flow. You'll be fine. Don't worry, you'll be fine. Okay, yeah, you're gonna see me in like all these different looks in the same video. Yeah. Mutable, we are versatile. She's versatile. All right. Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, here we go. There's a square between Mercury and Neptune. And for you, that has to do with lies and deception, but perhaps not the way that you think, because I think you've been dealing with that for a while. You're like, can I really trust this person? Especially in like a love scenario. You maybe have been wondering for the better part of six months, like, what's going on with this person? But now it's not really about the lies and deception. It becomes something deeper. It is diving into that OO territory. Um, it's not the thing itself, but what it's indicative of. Like what were you thinking or what was going on in that context that made this happen or made someone do this thing? You're seeing a bigger element of deceit. It's really uncomfortable because there's so much that you are willing to forgive, especially in love situations, friendships, family, especially love. But this isn't about forgiveness. This isn't about wanting to be there. This isn't about loyalty. So that's what makes it so dangerous because it bypasses all that. This is... This is about principle. Mm. So that can get a little bit ugly. The realizations can be a little bit ugly. But don't let people gaslight you and make you think that your intuition isn't on point. Your intuition is on point. But don't alienate people with your intuition either. They can't tell what's coming down the pipeline like you can. So getting upset with them, being impatient with them, you know, getting upset when you have to explain the same thing to them over and over again is because they really don't feel what you feel. They don't know what's coming. You do. Cancer rising. I do. It's um, way before it becomes something that we can articulate with Cancerians. It's just a feeling. We have these, um, it's akin to, well, nothing so dramatic, but it's akin to like your stomach dropping on a roller coaster. We can sense it, dare I say, you know, dare, dare I say like months, years ahead, we can just feel something coming. You know, this kind of impending feeling, right? Um, and right now, especially, we have that feeling. And if you talk too much about it with people, you're going to get one or two uh, reactions. Either people are going to alienate you um, or you're going to alienate them. So the best thing that you can do with this intuition is to put it into practical use for yourself. What can you invest in? Um, you know, what can you what can you sell? What can you say? What can you start doing right away to create new avenues? Uh, one thing I mentioned, I think I mentioned it already, but if I haven't, uh, learn to code for free on the internet. Just learn to code. Just do it. Just do it. Learn to code, and if you're really, really wanting the next five, 10 years of your life to go super smooth, learn to code and start a rudimentary basic education online of one of the major languages that's being spoken right now in either Asia, Europe, or the Middle East. I would say Mandarin, Arabic, German. 
dare I say, um, you know, world, it's a really smart move. That's my cancer rising rent on what's coming down the pipeline without telling you it's coming down the pipeline. Okay. All right, let's move along. Leo, did you miss me? I hope you missed me. I missed you. All right, Leo, uh, fifth house until the 21st of December, Leo rising. So, oh man, you're just a sitting duck for romance. You have the biggest kind of like dreams and cotton candy fantasies around the person that you love, but you also want to be the complete center of attention in their life. And, you know, and it makes sense because you want them to be the center of your life. And if there's no one to fill that role in your life right now, then you're creating someone to fill that role, even if it's just in your head. <coughs> Excuse me, you just need, you need that feeling, you know, um, or you have it or you're creating it or you're eliciting it from someone. Um, that feeling of being adored, being completely seen and comfortable with it and, and, and basking and being seen and being so confident and, and nourished by being seen. Uh, this first sum of you, Leo Sun Moon Rising, has been a long time coming. This has been quite a journey. But you feel so good and you feel secure in it. And regardless of who it is that's paying attention to you, it just it's filling you with this sense of like not worth necessarily, but confirmation. And that's so much sweeter. It's a really sweet time. Um you have this like lurking feeling, you Scorpio, Taurus, Aquarius, you have this like lurking feeling that love is just, you know, if you're single, that love is just somewhere nearby, the moons, especially of these signs, the fixed moons, that it's just like right under your nose somewhere and you're, and you're bound to bump into it. But you're already feeling the feelings of being deeply adored. You know, the way somebody looks at you when they just love you. When they, um, I was saying to someone the other day, hopefully you'll appreciate this, whenever I'm like, you know, I travel because my, my child lives in Europe. So um, whenever I'm traveling, people say like, oh, have you been to a place that you like more than New York? When people find out that I've lived in New York my whole life, they're like, wow, you never wanted to move. You never wanted to... You know, and there are kind of expat, thriving expat communities all over Scandinavia, all over Europe. Um, and I'm like, no. And they're like, you've never been to a city that you thought was like as nice as New York? I'm like, yeah, I've been to a lot of cities that I thought were as nice as New York. Like, it's not about that. And the way that I've come to understand my love of that place um, and what I think love is to me. And so, of course, I would figure this out through my love for New York. <laughs> I was raised by wolves. Um, is simply that when you're in love with someone, it's not that you don't see beauty walking by. There are a million beautiful people in the world. There are a million beautiful outfits in the world. There are a million beautiful situations in the world where someone will look gorgeous and they'll be shining and you'll see them and you there is some part of you that registers it's not like i go to london and don't see the beauty that is london it's not like i haven't been to paris and I've been in awe it's not you know like copenhagen is a trip but when you're in love you can see beauty and you can even acknowledge beauty but it does nothing to you because you're in love yeah sure it's like something it's there and it's like okay you know but it's not the person you're in love with. The person you're in love with is just like this shining, glowing, beautiful thing. It's not even about like who they are, what they look like, but it's so past that now. It's like you're, you're in a different, it's not that you don't see, you just don't care. You know, I see other cities. I have a million reasons to move to LA, for example. I see other cities, but I don't really see them. I see some like, shady veiled version of them that you see respectfully through a lowered gaze of somebody who's in love I, you know what i mean like yeah but whatever it's not better than what i got you know 
that level of adoration that comes from a deep connection, whether it's with a thing, a person, whatever, you are craving it. And the reason you're craving it, and is often the case with you, you're craving it because it's coming. You're, this is your way of prepping. It's like anxiety, excitement. It's you want something to really sink your teeth into and you want something to sink, sink its teeth into you. And your restlessness and your flightiness and your anxiety that comes with losing options, you know, all this kind of stuff that Leos absolutely have in them. Um, it's, it's just naturally calming down. It's not dissipating. It's not going anywhere. It's just... it. Even that part of you feels safe enough to just observe. You know, you have predator instincts. They're not just going to go away. Um, but you are able to be mollified. And I think that this is a beautiful time because you are so much more vulnerable than you realize. That's beautiful. Okay. Let's keep going. Yes. Hi. Okay, sorry about the outfit changes. Sorry about the day and night and then day again. We are just in a deluge of information. Like the news cycle is going crazy. There's all so sorts of stuff. My Instagram's popping off of that stuff at The Quietest Revolution if you want to look at it. But let's get back to the signs and get this video out. Uh, happy Thanksgiving. Happy Remembrance of Indigenous Sacrifice and Murder. Okay, Libra. You gotta come to the table with something real, something personal, something that actually means something. Your entire life, when you get to the pinnacle of, of any sort of success or there's a culmination of goals, your entire life can become a race to stay at the top, right? Which is a, which is a futile race. You're already there. You, it's just a, it's running in place to stay where you are. But the I Ching puts this beautifully. Um, when you get to the top of the mountain, that's all you know about the journey is the top of getting to the top. You have no idea what the other side of the mountain, uh, the cold face of the other face of the mountain will look like and what that journey down will look like. You don't know, but it is implied in the journey up that there will be a journey down. Now for Libras being super achieving, like high energy achieving people, it can be very difficult to hear that and you're immediately starting to think, well, how can I problem solve this? How can I manage this? How can I mitigate this? Is there a way around this? Is it true what she's saying that if you get to the top, then you must, you know, then you must come down? Well, if you look at it from the perspective of the I Ching, it's not about falling down. It's not what goes up must come down. It's the journey that one is on and that, and that journeys have a lot of faces and you go through a lot of different transitions in your journey. Yes, part of it is going uphill. Part of it is becoming the pinnacle of success. And then the journey moves along. It's not just like your journey stops there. And then for the rest of your life, you're like this stagnant Scrooge McDuck character just running around, jumping around in their own gold. It doesn't work that way. That's not life. That's not how wealth is you know, used in a proper way. That's not how life is uh, lived, right? So if you feel yourself uninspired, if you feel yourself being kind of dragged down by the material, it's because you may be running on this hamster wheel of trying to stay where you are. And even if that stay where you are is the pinnacle of success, it's still a completely futile pursuit because it's stagnant. You're not going anywhere. You're not learning anything. You're not getting better. You're not changing. You're not evolving. The thing about being emotionally really attached to a certain level of success, notoriety, wealth, beauty, age, uh, you know, an amalgamation of all of them. The problem with that is that you have assigned that as the end goal. Not, not, not a goal, but the end goal. That's the end game. So when you get there, there is no future after that. that. That's it, right? Because it's empty. Because it doesn't have anything to do with 
the things that are actually substantial, the things, that, and that's what we come to with this is, so, so what is it about then if it's not the material and if I can't just, you know, run in place to stay at the very top there, you know, my journey ends there. Why can't my journey end there? Well, it can't, that's not how journeys work. Well, then what am I supposed to do? If I can't see a journey past that, if I can't allow myself as a cardinal sign who is deeply, deeply based in perfection, how can I imagine, you know, or visualize something past the top of the mountain? I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to give myself some sort of mental primer on how to lose or how to fail. <clears throat> Excuse me, but that's not what it's about. What it's about. It's not about losing. It's not about failing. It's about evolving. It's about growing. And, and the way that you do that is you drop the facade. You stop trying to run in place and stay at the top. You bring your real self to the table and you put it in front of people. You make yourself personally vulnerable and it gives people something to sink their teeth into. But that's not something that you can artificially create. You cannot create in this moment, Libra, you've been able to do it before, but you cannot create this uh, artificial authenticity. You're, you guys are usually very good at it. You can make people believe that you really do feel a certain way or you're really as nice as someone thinks you are when you know you're not. Um, and that's not a read. All Libras know they're not as nice as they pretend to be. But the fact that you can compel people to believe that is really impressive and scary, right? So when you decide that instead of charming the pants off of everybody, because you could do that, when you realize that being able to manipulate people doesn't actually get you anything after it gets you whatever you want and you're still unhappy, then you start to realize that being able to manipulate people, being able to charm people, being able to glamour people, it doesn't get you anywhere because it doesn't get you the things that actually satiate you. It doesn't get you anything that actually satisfies you. So in December, you have this very hard realization of like, none of this is going to work. I need to actually put my vulnerable self on the table. The kind of security that you are actually looking for right now in life cannot be bought. It can't be, you can't bully people into giving it to you. You can't manipulate people into giving it to you. You need people to actually relate and connect to you and see you. That's the only way you're going to get the security you're looking for. And that all depends on if you have the guts to come out from beside, behind the facade. And if you're a Libra who's already done this work and is like, I'm out from beside, behind the facade, now what? Keep bringing your authentic self to the table. Your success is long lasting. You're not running in place at the top. You are getting to the top, continuing to evolve, continuing to be honest with yourself, continuing to come to the table openly, and continuing to raise that mountain with you as you become more and more successful. With your evolution, you push that ceiling a little bit more up. You don't get to the top and then just go, mm. you don't get to the top and then go, mm, I'm gonna stay here and then slide all the way down on your ass. You push the ceiling up and you keep going. And that to me is the highest expression of Cardinal Libra energy, is the one that makes those hard mental pushes for the rest of us to kind of, you know, cower underneath or um, they umbrella us and we can thrive underneath that canopy. But when that same energy is used instead to self-serve, it is extremely distasteful to be around. And there's one thing that I would say is much worse for me at least, uh, and that's, it's boring. Yeah, there's just nothing interesting about it. Um, it's pathetic is what it is. So it's like not even that it's not interesting. It's like hard to be around it because you're just like, <laughs> I want to go home. You know, like I don't want to watch this person put on this heartbreaking display of trying to ingratiate themselves with everyone around them. Like I can't do this. I don't, I don't care if it's for money. I don't care if it's for clout. I don't care why you're doing it. Like don't do it. Don't do it. Just if it's very difficult to be around. It's very difficult to stomach. But that same person, Libras who are authentic, Libras who are honest, Libras who come to you and just say the thing they want to say or be the way they are, 
are some of the most treasured of friends. They make excellent parents. They make incredible siblings. They make incredible in-laws because they're so able to see both sides, you know? So do your best when December shows you these uh, moments where you're thinking, yeah, it's gotta be more. Like I gotta do more. There's gotta be more to me than this. I gotta, I, I, I want more than this. I want more than just be, you know? Then let those moments happen for you and don't be mad at yourself for them. Just, you know, part of what triggers people about the way I talk is like, it's very matter of fact. And I think that people would enjoy it more if I was like judgy about it. But like, I don't, the judgment is in what I'm saying. I don't have to be judgy about it. It's just, it's the judgment and how factual and how triggering that, that like matter of fact tone is. That's what's, that's what's judgy about it. It's like, this is, we all know this. These are the things that y'all do. It's like, if I were to say like, Gemini purposefully upset people. And it's a terrible thing to do, but they purposefully upset people because there are some times where we can see that your mind just is not going to open unless we say something to first like circumnavigate this like idiotic system you have of like cutting people out. And then, so we're going to short circuit that by really pissing you off, being really annoying. And then we're going to say something that's going to make you really think, maybe I just did that to you right now. And you said you missed my face. Right now, you guys are thinking, I wish this bitch would just put the camera back on the car because I don't know if I want to hear this. Hit. Scorpio. Hi, Scorpio. Okay. Ooh, I knew this was coming for you guys, but I was just like waiting. Like what was going to be the thing that kicked it off for you? But I've been feeling this in my Scorpio friends for a while now. You need a permanent change of scenery. You want to get out of whatever you're in. You can't do this anymore. Whatever it is, what if it's your living situation, if it's your work situation that has you by the throat, if it's like a roommate situation, you, you're so done. If you want, you got to move out of the house. You want the divorce. You, you want to leave one person to go be with whatever the messy Scorpio landscape is like. One thing is for certain. You just need to change. You're like, I don't, is this what the rest of my life is going to be like? I'll tell you like this. And I've told this story before in the podcast, the podcast called revolution ramblings. It's fun. You should check it out. I don't, I know if I don't do this video right now, I'm not going to do it until later. And I want it out for Thanksgiving. So this is what I wore to pick up my kid from school. Okay. I'll insert a clip here of what it looks like. It's a whole outfit. Okay. So when my brother and his wife moved into their apartment, I was like laying on their sofa like looking up at the ceiling and my brother said to his wife, um, my older brother, he was like, Hey, what color should we paint these rafters? Uh, should we paint them orange? And I was of course thinking in my head, please God, don't do that. That why? But like, also I was like immediately taken out of that thought by the next thing. So, so his wife was like, yeah, sure. I mean, I don't know, but like, you know, are you sure you want to commit to that color or something along the lines of what I was thinking, which was like, eek, no. And then he said, well, it doesn't really matter. You know, we can change it later. We're going to live here for the rest of our lives. I have never felt this actual physical sensation before where you have to get up and get out of a place because there is something in you that is so physically, emotionally, but then physically leading to a physical trigger where you have to get up and leave. Because I was like, at this point, we're just a few stories off the ground. I could jump out the window and just like run down the sidewalk. Like, I don't know what it was, but it immediately made me feel completely caged in. And like, it was the, the mentality that did it, but he's a Capricorn to him. It was like the most satisfying thing to say out loud, you know, years of accomplishment and work, mashallah, you buy this gorgeous apartment on the upper West. Like, like in his mind, it was like the most affirming, but for me, oh, and for you guys right now, you are at the place where I was at, where you get up off the couch and you're like, you know what? I'll be back in a few minutes. Cause if I don't leave, I'm going to jump the window and run to the park so Scorpio rising is going to feel this the most because you have that third house business going on with Capricorn where you have 
Mercury there and then you have Venus there. So you're going to feel that work living environment, work slash living environment, especially if you have one of those going on. You're like, no, I need a different place. If I'm just going to work from home all the time, I'm not going to go outside. Why am I not in a bigger place? Why am I not in the middle of nowhere? Why am I not like you're having these thoughts of completely disconnecting from what you have had so far. And you know, what's so funny. I love this time period for you because you're so annoyed by everything that you've just completely forgotten to put up your guard. And when you don't put up your guard, you are so relatable, surprisingly, because Scorpios are the most unrelatable sign. Everyone like sees you from the outside and is just kind of like, are they being bitchy? But are they always like this? I don't understand. I'm also not paying attention because they're just very attractive. But also I wish I was paying attention because I think this bitch is being rude to me. But like, it's always like we don't really know. We just kind of try to stay afloat. No, this is different. This is you being genuinely, surprisingly relatable. Where people around you are laughing with you, smiling with you. They totally get what you're saying. They totally get what you mean. Nobody thinks you have a bad attitude. Nobody thinks you're getting annoyed for no reason. Everybody seems to be agreeing with you and not because they're afraid of you, not because you want them to. You're not even noticing that people are agreeing with you. You're not noticing other people. You're so in your head about needing this change that you have just forgotten to put your armor on. And the vulnerability that shines through when either out of like, you know, absent mindedness, because you're so distracted by something else you're consumed that you forget or because you've done the work and you've gotten there. Either way, you're stepping into December and people around you are just like, you know, I really like being around you. And like the thing you said the other day, like, I know you think you were a little worked up about it, but I agree with you. Like people are beginning to understand you and they see you and they're not judging you for it. And it feels so good. And by the middle of the month, you're like, what am I doing? Like, I need to know, I need to figure out what I'm doing because I want to keep doing this because this is making my life easier. It's making work easier. It's making relationships easier. It's making uh, interaction with children, siblings, spouses easier. Like, come on, I, uh, parents. And around mid month is when I think you have a moment where you realize yourself that the facade is gone, that you just forgot to do that. And I think the, the experiences you have from unconsciously beginning to drop the facade to actually realizing mid-December that you, you have dropped it and you didn't realize you didn't have it on, you have so many positive experiences that you begin to rethink the armor a little. And you know, it's about time. You've probably been wearing the armor for a good decade or so. Something probably happened that hurt you a while ago and you know how you guys are. You're so sensitive, not a judgment. I think it's beautiful that you probably were like, nah, for a decade, because the decade's nothing to somebody who's eternal. You know, people be like, damn, you didn't speak to so-and-so for a decade. This motherfucker doesn't even know what a decade is. You know, isn't it like scorpions? You could like freeze them, they come back to life, or they like turn blue. I don't know, whatever. doesn't matter. <clears throat> so, and then I read, right when I say that, I read, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter what brought you to this humility. That's the line that I have here. Doesn't matter what brought you to this humility. Just be grateful. Embrace it. It's such an amazing life hack to not even know you're doing something, get the most positive results from it. So you're not scared. You don't have it. You're not gun shy going because you're like, no, no, this worked. Like, I didn't even know I was doing it, but I was doing it and it's worked so well. And if you keep doing it, you'll keep working it and it'll work well. And the more you do it, the more you will begin to uh, dismantle even deeper levels of the armor. Who doesn't want that? I'm very excited for you. I have to say. I think you guys deserve, you know, not just a win. Because like, one of the things that I really like about you is that you don't give a fuck about wins in the way people think you do. I think that people think you're obsessed with winning because you win so often. I don't think that's what it is. I think it's because you're so winning, like winning is so for you guys is always secondary to whatever like the motivation is, whatever the driving ideal is, whether it's like, you know, I want to prove myself or vengeance or, you know, I know there's a lot more between those two. I just can't think of them. I'm going to stop reading you because you have a whole video coming out. Let's go. All right. Sagittarius.
I know I talked about you guys a little already, but let's do a little more. You, unlike Scorpios, are very gun shy about connecting right now. You have had some experiences lately. And for some of you, going back quite a while, that have been hazardous. And it has made you deeply, deeply afraid to connect, which is terrifying because it's one of your superpowers. You need it. You have to do it. Um, it's very fundamental, okay, to your nature and to what you need to do in life. So for you to feel this disconnected, for you to feel purposefully isolated, for a while that feels safe, you know, and we're like, okay, yeah, and we kind of lean into it. And then after a while, it's like, oh, I could probably go on forever like this and nobody would notice. Which you can, as sad, just get into that energy. But the thing that you fail to remember when people are low is that your persona, most of the time, is so convincing that you got everything under control that when you are truly suffering and you become resentful that people aren't there for you, most of the time it's because they have no idea you're going through something. You have, in so many instances in their mind, reaffirmed to them your independence, your strength, your resourcefulness, your intelligence. That they do see you, and we all, I think, see you in the Zodiac as this idealized, you know, um, modern super, super person. You know, you, you are very close to the end of the Zodiac. You have learned all the things we haven't learned yet. And yet, you know, the shooter of the arrow, the one who is meant to connect with the next thing, with, with the next time, with the next topic, with the next thought, is terrified. His stage, you know, has stage fright, has come down with a bout of stage fright, has anxiety. So how do we get, you know, what does he say in um, Nope? He says, okay, well, who's going to go down there and get the star out of his trailer? Who's going to get Sag to come back to the stage and connect on a visceral level with people like we need you to do? So my Vedic chart is actually Sag heavy and this video even very much for me feels like, you know, pulling myself back to the center and being like, okay, I will allow myself to be seen. I will allow myself to connect. It's not easy once you've isolated, once you've been hiding for a while, it's not easy to come back, but and this is not intentional, um, uh, to use the horse metaphor, I'm, I'm not doing it because you're Sages, you gotta get back in the saddle. You can't spend your whole life hiding. You can't spend your whole life isolating. You can't spend your whole life licking your wounds. All of those things are valid. All of those things happened. All of those things were necessary. And now we've gotta move. And a lot of times, what also comes with this idealized Sage that we have in our heads is this fear of not talking to you straight. It is this fear that you're gonna say something so smart and quippy and something we never thought of that's gonna make us feel stupid and all of a sudden we're gonna be like, why did I even say anything? Nobody even asked me. Um, which means that sometimes, you know, I come from a large South Asian family, three brothers, no sisters. Everyone's telling you what to do all the time. Everyone's got some fucking opinion of what you need to do. Alhamdulillah, it's great. But like, you know, um, but sometimes you guys lack that. You guys lack someone who's gonna be like, hey, yo, you know, you need to fucking stop. Um, ironically, though, you respond very well to it. Like a lot of what I'm saying, if you're feeling, you know, triggered by it, it's I'm not saying that you're actually like this. I'm saying that this is how people perceive you. And it's dangerous because it leaves you in this kind of like bionic, almost artificial state where people don't expect you to have 
real problems, real emotions, real dilemmas, real nuance to your human condition. They just expect you to be this bright, bouncy, fiery, charming, gorgeous to look at, sexual, fun, interesting person. You know, but I said all those things, but and this is all the things that people say about Saj, but what are all the normal things that a person needs to be fucking normal that were left out of that? You know, when I give that rundown, it sounds to me like Morty, when they put Morty through the toxic machine and it takes all of toxic Morty out and then it's just some fucking douchebag where every time he cuts carrots, it's like, mm, what is this, organic? Is this organic? Like, no, you have nuance. You have these, you know, dips where you feel the world is too gross and too stupid and people don't respect the right things and they're not connecting in the right ways and I can't believe people can be like this or be like this or I can't believe that someone who connected me with me would be like this. I can't believe that this industry that I connected with would keep me so caged. I can't believe something I signed up to do for a living would make me feel so terrible. There are many ways this is manifesting for Sagittarians right now, but the the crux of all this is the, the important part after all that talking, is that on December 20th, that freedom you've been craving for over a decade, it comes pouring in. You're so overwhelmingly supported from December 20th on that you will come back to this video and be like, yeah, no, astrology is crazy. Good, let's continue. Okay. <clears throat> Capricorn. Now, on the 6th, you have Mercury entering your sign. On the 9th, you have Venus entering your sign. You're popular. You're smart. You're in control. You look amazing because you know you're popular and you know you're smart and you know everyone's going to be around you. So you're going to make the effort to look amazing, even on those days when you just want to walk in there and just be the boss and not be the amazing looking boss, you're still going to take the 10 minutes that it takes to do whatever you do to make yourself feel amazing. Feel amazing doesn't mean looking amazing. Some people need to look amazing to feel amazing. If that's not you, doesn't matter as long as you feel amazing. But if you look amazing, it'll be a bonus. Now, the reason I'm saying also look amazing is because we all know, as Netflix keeps proving to us that love is not blind. And uh, while we may be thinking about a past person, there are people in the present moment right now, Capricorn, who want to fall at your feet. So if you're thinking about a past failure, if you're thinking about a past love, if you're thinking about a past career or a you know celebrated youth that you want back, yeah, you're looking backwards and there's a lot of people standing right in front of you, sitting in front of you, kneeling in front of you, proposing to you, wanting to date you, wanting to buy you things, all this shit. It's all in front of you, but you've got to turn around and look at it and not keep looking at the convoluted memory behind you of something that doesn't even exist. Now, for some of you, this manifests in terms of family. Some of you, it's like, no, I'm not thinking about a past love. I'm not thinking about, but I am thinking about my really, really fucked up past. I'm thinking about my childhood. I'm thinking about my mom. I'm thinking about, you know, how I still need to manage my mother, like whatever it is that is being brought up from the past, it doesn't necessarily have to be some, I don't use those words, you've never heard me use these words, but like this is stupid like soulmate, twin, flip, whatever this bullshit is, like not that. But like it doesn't have to, it could be so much more impactful than that, to be honest. Um, it could be about your parents, it could be about your upbringing, it could be like finally facing the fact that you're living out a trauma response instead of being able to actually live day to day in peace because you're constantly being triggered by memories of the past. You get to a point in mid-December where Mercury and Venus has made sense of this for you in a way where you're like, I have the world in my hands. Why would I let that go for someone, something, some trauma back there that does not, no, that is no longer actively happening to me. Now, one of the positive things that comes out of that is, okay, it's no longer actively happening to me, but it is passively still affecting me. Maybe I need therapy. Maybe I need to talk to somebody. Maybe I need to talk to a friend. Maybe I need to talk to my parents. Maybe I need to talk to whatever it is. It leads you to a realization of like, yeah, this is not okay. I have the world at my feet. I have the world in my hands if I want it. If I could just pick it up and hold it. So why am I living back there somewhere? And the acknowledgement 
of this is so big for uh, so big for Capricorns because the two signs around you, like Aquarians will be honest about it. They'll be like, yeah, I look backwards sometimes. I shouldn't. And I don't really do it with feeling. Sometimes I look back just to be like, damn, I could be a dick, right? And on the other hand, you have Sagittarians who can get so shell-shocked as they are right now by the past that they kind of keep reliving it in their present. They keep making it happen. You guys never want to admit anything about the past. You like to act like you don't even have a past unless you're like telling a story about something you like. You know, um, you're very much the move forward and never look back, you know? So it's kind of debilitating for you in a way to admit to yourself. This is not something that's happening between you and other people. This is just you and you. And it's still embarrassing to you that you have to admit to yourself that yes, you are fixated in some way looking backwards and you're not the prototypical Capricorn whose eyes are, you know, foc laser focused forward and upward. Yes, you are that, but truly, emotionally, in here, in here, you're back there. And that acknowledgement simultaneously hurts like hell because it's a huge blow to our identity, but it's also, in, it's supremely freeing because you finally turn your face all the way forward and you're like, fine, let's go then. Yeah, that stuff happened. Yeah, that person happened. Yeah, that's what life was like. Yes, this is what it's done to me. This is what it's left me with. Now we move forward with that. Does that mean moving forward with therapy? Does that mean moving forward with group therapy? Does that mean forward moving forward with journaling? Does that mean moving forward with creating art out of it? Creating, you know, some expression. That's up to you. It's not about like saying like, yeah, I get it. And it didn't exist. And that's it. It's done. No, it's about saying, yes, it does exist. But I can't live there anymore. That's the acknowledgement part. You know you think about it. You know it comes up all the time. I think the part that's jarring for you is in December. You know how Sagittarius logic is? It's like, pew, it's like one arrow, but it's like, oh, fuck, that really hurt. That was the one spot where I had a weakness. That arrow for you this season is you're living out of that space. Okay. And that's okay. But, but that's okay. You're going to be fine. You're going to be fine. It just, you know, just need to talk about it. Aquarius. There is a Sartre quote, right? Jean-Paul Sartre. Sartre. Um, hell is other people. But they never all, like say like the full quote. Hell is other people and heaven is us. So... Hell is other people holds very true for you guys right now. You are so irritated by people you have to work with, people you have to work around. But I think there's something deeper than this. I think that your boundaries are being crossed with people who you have to absolutely be around. You don't really have a choice. You've made certain choices already and made certain decisions to have put you that have put you in proximity to people that you really need to mold your boundaries around and they need to mold their boundaries around you and I don't know how well they're doing at it but you seem to be doing a lot more molding than they are and you may have gotten to the point where you're thinking why is this happening to me like why am I the one that has to constantly concede I have a sort of hot take on this Amit Goswami talks about in the I think it's called The Quantum Activist. It's on Netflix. Amit Goswami, who is the father of quantum mechanics, he wrote the, he wrote the textbook that you read, you know, that you get first year of physics. Um, he goes on at length about the idea of the body being able to distinguish between ourselves and others and how this is a function of them, something called the thymus gland, which is shaped like a heart and sits on top of the heart. It is a appendage of the lymphatic system and the immune system. The thymus gland plays a large part in determining what the body sees as self and what the body sees as not self. And accordingly then sends out lots of things to try to kill something, create an immune response or not. If the body identifies something as self, it will not create an immune response. You see this often in children who get super sick with something and the mom is taking care of them doesn't get sick. 
you see this with certain like legendary nurses, my mother being one of them, God bless her, um, who my mother worked single-handedly an entire tuberculosis ward when she was in her 20s in Pakistan because nobody else wanted to work there and they all were terrified that they would get sick and die. She still, if you test her now, comes up as positive for tuberculosis. She don't have it. She never had it. Um, but she worked the whole ward by herself because no one would do it. And then she would go on to be one of the first nurses in the tri-state area to take on an AIDS patient for home care because no one in the 80s would even go near AIDS patients. So there are certain types of people who have learned how to override their immune system, all that to say. So they effectively see other people as themselves and it keeps them from getting sick because it doesn't create this immune response and it, their body doesn't like take on the sickness either. So why do I say that? If you can in December do a little work with trying to incorporate others into your life, not just as mirrors of yourself, because I know that's a concept that's been over talked about for a long time, but maybe another way to look at it is this. What if every person that you're coming across is you? I know it reeks of solipsism, but stay with me. What if every person that you're coming across is you trying to have a conversation, a hard conversation about yourself that you simply cannot have here? And so it's presenting in the external. So perhaps you can through human interaction, human interaction, just a light show, right? A light show between a light show and a light show. Um, maybe you can figure that out because it's not something for whatever reason that you can do on your own in here none of this being at all real um and if like the other signs are like what is she talking she was like being like she was like actually giving useful advice you know Tauruses right now are like my my part was useful but this is Aquarius talk like it's useful for Aquarians so so when you have these moments where you really do feel like us against them right when you have these moments, moments where them is a palpable thing, like why are these people, these people out here attacking me, criticizing me, annoying me, coming after me, making things harder for me, whatever so what it is. If every one of those people that's showing up in your life and pushing your boundaries or making you limit your self and push your own bound pull your own boundaries in so they can have more room what if every one of those people is a way for you to speak to you something that you just can't seem to confront in your conscious mind something that your friends can't seem to get through to you something that your family can't seem to get through to you if you were able to look and this is very age of aquarius this very much goes along with the way that you are it's not like a huge leap for you if you can look at the different situations that people are presenting, the different stresses, the different pushing of your boundaries as versions of you that have come to speak to you about something that you are avoiding, about something that you have sublimated for so long. Um, for example, it's very common with Aquarians to have this need not to be seen, to be concealed usually comes from a precocious childhood. They're smarter than they should be. It gives them this intense shyness because people pay too much attention to them. Uh, God forbid, on top of that, if they happen to be in any way good looking at all, then it's going to be even worse. And so, you know, if you have people showing up, for example, if that's one of the things you got going on, you have someone showing up over and over again in your life in December who just needs you to see them not fix them, not pencil them in, not help them, just see them. And this is really just triggering you and you find yourself at odds with this person and you feel like they're trying to take so much from you. What if we could rephrase that conversation as a conversation between you and the part of you that you do not allow to be seen and that, person, that part of you is now manifesting as this other person saying, hey, see me. Would that make a difference? Would that make it more terrifying or would that make it more rewarding or both? Because, you know, you like both. Together, preferably. So good. Um, all that is to say that you can learn so much. 
It's such an intellectually rich season for you. You can make so much progress just as a human being by doing this work and by have and, and being lucky enough that every person that you're interacting with right now, no matter how much they're irritating you and grating against your nerves, they're giving you this invaluable insight into who you are, what you're denying, what you need to face, what you need to talk about, like the healing and the growth and the evolution that comes after this is so joyous. It's long lived. It's effective. It pushes you into yet another stratosphere, you know, of contentment, success, but also just good vibes, like feeling good about self, feeling good about daily life, going from Monday to Tuesday to Wednesday to Thursday and like being like, yeah, this is a good week. It's not I'm waiting for Friday, Saturday, Sunday. It's not I'm waiting until I'm super wealthy. It's not I'm waiting until I made it. It's not I'm waiting until I have that person. It's like I genuinely am going through every single day feeling like it's a great day. Nothing's really happening you are able to achieve that level of it's more than contentment it's like a it's it's some domesticated version of nirvana it's so close to absolute joy to be able to go from one day to the next without resentment without pain without grief without sorrow without pushing yourself and admonishing yourself for not being where you should be by now la, 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 la. And if you treat the people coming across you as a version of yourself, coming to have these difficult conversations with you, the amount of compassion, one, that you will have for that person and how that relationship between you and them will grow, who knows? You know, you can make some really good friends, uh, enemies that will turn into friends sometimes. But also imagine how much the compassion for you grows when you acknowledge that there are parts of you that you don't, you don't know. Don't get emotional. Okay. Pisces. What's that saying? Okay, that's my little outro. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, the outro is good. Trust me. Everything else in this video is like the outfits are changing, the lighting is changing, the vibe is changing, the sound is changing. It's like a very long TikTok. <laughs> um, but we do have an outro that'll pull it out to get all together. So <clears throat> here we go. Pisces. Okay. December 22 for you is like a Christmas rom-com. Have you ever heard anyone say anything that you wanted to hear more? Pisces, it's a Christmas rom-com. You're meeting people. You're having adorable meet cute moments. You're, you know, in the rom-com, there's this like moment where one of them realizes that like the people before weren't shit, you know, and like how they're so much better than anyone they ever, <laughs> you'll have that. Um, you know how like in rom-coms, people are like perfectly dressed all the time um, and they're always dressed for the weather unless the weather is part of the storyline and someone has to give somebody like an article of clothing. Yes, you, what you can do now, I'm serious about this, and I'll give you the technicals in your video. Um, what you can do now is you can seamlessly stitch yourself in to rom-com land, okay? So it starts actually in a few days and will go all the way through December. What does that mean, stitch yourself seamlessly in? Have you ever watched videos of this ancient Japanese stitching technique where they like hand stitch a piece, a patch over a fabric. So it really looks like there's the fabric is like unbroken. Like if there's a tear in a really fine fabric, they'll put another fabric under it and they'll go stitch by stitch and basically weave. Okay, weave, listen to me, that piece of small square of silk into the, like, it's like, it's, between that, just side note, between that and watching the Japanese um, clean up the Qatari stadium after the first World Cup game, like honestly, like there's so many levels to the respect, I can't, but we're not here to talk about that. 
rom-com but stitched at that degree of perfection at that degree of hard work i want you to stitch yourself in seamlessly into the silk of whatever favorite christmas rom-com you have that you want played out in your life because everything is coming to you they want you they know they made a mistake your friends are almost can't stand you because everyone they bring around wants to talk to you and you're like oh but i'm not really like feeling my best right it has nothing to do with you and that's perhaps the most freeing part and i love that about rom-coms and that's why that's the metaphor that i'm using here i love this i love because the person in the romantic comedy if you're wondering what the fuck a rom-com is since i've said it 20 times the thing about the person in the romantic comedy that it's about is that they're completely unaware they're like the bumbling idiot in their own love story, right? That's you. You don't have to do anything. It's not like you did something to deserve it. All you have to now do is stitch yourself into the narrative. And before I start sounding like the guys in Scream when they're talking about movies, let's get into what I actually mean. Dive, dive deep into your unfinished art, your unfinished work, your unfinished pursuit, your unfinished physical goals get really lost in doing something amazing that you want to finish and get done. Just do your own thing. Be that oblivious person who's so, you know, like this outfit is so, right? It's very absent-minded professor. Like be so in your shit and doing your shit, but like dress perfectly, looking amazing, that your rom-com meet cute moment is always just waiting to happen. And if you're thinking like, ugh, are all these videos about single people? No, we almost never talk about relationships here if you're new. Um, but I'm not just talking about meet cute moments. Meet cute is the moment in the romantic comedy where the two people meet. Um, no, I'm, I mean like in all instances, I mean with your endeavors, with your work, with your goals, with your life, with your family, with wealth, with opportunity, with schooling, you know, getting the thing you wanted for the study you wanted, whatever the fuck, like you keep having these blissful moments and I think what it does to you, if we can look past that now for a second, like, okay, so then what? So then what happens is after a month or so of having really sublime experiences and really feeling the world is accepting you and, you know, no one is feeling like you're too much or giving too much or being too much, you're just right. And that's not necessarily normal. Um, after about a month of this kind of back and forth with people, you're really starting to rethink relationships what marriage means, what friendship means, how parents should be acting, how siblings should act, you know, how coworkers should act, how a boss should act, how a business owner should act. You know, you're thinking about yourself, you, you're included, you know, what should I be acting like? What am I putting out there? You have like this pillowy, soft, satiny experience for a month. And instead of making you syrupy and spoiled and demanding and gross, what it does is it gives you a lot of perspective because you are so intelligent. It gives you a lot of perspective into what meaning you've put on your relationships before this. You're like, wow, I feel really good. I feel like this is the perfect time to kind of update all the terms and conditions I have about the different relationships in my life. And part of that's gonna be like dismantling some stuff that's been there from trauma that you no longer identify with. Some of that will be, you know, updating like what you think of people, right? Or what you think like, um, a partner should be, a spouse should be, a significant other should be, whatever the fuck. It's gonna be that, but it's also like, what kind of parent am I gonna be? Am I right now, whatever. There are so many different ways that a person can react to getting what they want and having everybody's attention. And to react in a way that is based solely in personal evolution and how to better yourself and better your connections with others is so admirable. <laughs> it's so impressive because so much of the Zodiac, if they had the energy that you have in December, would completely abuse it. Gemini included. Gemini be, would be the first one to be like, start all the fires. you know. But for you to take all that charisma, all that jazz, all that pizzazz, and use it to not get like an inflated ego, to not run amok 
you know, and destroy the boundaries of the people around you, but instead to like sit thoughtfully and be like, hmm, I may not have been as kind as I should be in my characterization of such and such, or I may be a little bit traumatized and I don't really identify with that anymore. I'm actually feeling really good. Now, if you're wondering, okay, but what about when the month's over and do we go back to like, you know, normal life, which is not a romantic comedy? Here's the cool thing about you. When a door of understanding is pushed open for you, you don't go back. Sure, you swim a lot. Sometimes you swim in circles, but you don't swim backward. So when you understand something, it becomes a part of you. Just like, you know, it's so much a part of you. It's you're a fish in water. You don't know it's there. When you get there with this rom-com feeling, that's what I'm saying, stitch yourself in. You know, it's a Neville Goddard thing. You got to stitch yourself in emotionally, physically, everything. Get yourself in that space. When you get there, you're going to click with it. You're going to feel it. You're going to feel people's reaction. You're going to feel your power. You're going to feel like you can like press a button and get what you want out of people. When you get there, remember it. Once you have it, this is very rooted in Joe Dispenza's work, Bruce Lipton's work, but this is also in the basic psychology. When you know a feeling, you can recreate it. So once you get a hang of this, because everyone here is on a different journey, right? This chart ties into my little, you know, closer. Your journey is not like the other journeys. You're not here to do what the rest of us are here to do. You're done, right? It's like when you're packing up all your shit and like you're signing the last of the papers and like, like you're out. So you're not here to use boons and gifts and blessings in the same way that the rest of us do. Sure, you have your moments, but overall, there is a much more important art to your lives and it has to do with development, self-development. So this energy is perfect for you. You can use it perfectly. You can learn a skill that you will use for the rest of your life because you will learn how to turn this energy on when you want it. And who knows how that changes the trajectory of your life, how many positive different revenue streams you can create from building these, you know, relationships with people who are just like, I trust you. I'll give you whatever, you sure. You know, who knows what blessings come to you after you put out an incredible body of work and, and, and change the way that people think, you know, about, about life, about themselves. Like you have that, what I'm trying to say is you have the power and the potential to create great change. And I think the reason that you're able to do that is because you're not afraid of creating great change within yourself. And this is one of those times when you can learn something so valuable and it can affect your life in so many positive ways. And that will then create a ripple effect, which is what I'm trying to get to, where you create this enormous change in other people's lives. That's what you're here to do. And that's why they pay me the big bucks. All right, let me do my closer. This video as disjointed as it is, is called Hitting Moving Targets. Some of these arrows may zip past you and December in general. There are some arrows that will graze you and they will hurt, but they won't get you. If you're smart, you'll keep your head down, but then you won't learn anything. If you're really smart, You'll dodge most of them, but you'll let some of them hit you where they need to. And you'll spend most of the month thinking. Now I know on the surface you'll be partying, including today. I know that you'll be saying a lot of things you don't mean and a lot of things you do mean. And I know at some point in December, we're all going to look outside if we're in the Northern Hemisphere and go, shit. But. And I do this every Sagittarius season. Do not let any of that convince you that you are in any way disconnected from the world. You are completely keyed in and connected to every single other being here. Irrespective of how you might feel 
in the moment. So when it gets dark and it feels like everybody else has somebody or somewhere to go or people to be around or somewhere to have a little light in their life in all the darkness, and it starts to feel like maybe you don't have any, not even one, or maybe you feel like you don't have enough, or maybe you feel like you didn't do the right thing so you'd have more, whatever you're thinking. You're not looking at the science. The science is, it's all connected. If in the material, in this moment, it feels far away, that's your perception. It's just you. There's nothing else here. So that isolation, that loneliness that you may feel, regardless of if you're surrounded by a million people or if you're all alone, that loneliness never really leaves you, this existential dread that we're somehow locked in our own hologram. But if it gets too lonely, reach out. You can always reach out to me on Instagram. Anyone in RevFam will tell you that. Reach out to your friends if you feel like you have any. Reach out to a hotline. I'll put a number below if you feel like you don't. But I guarantee you, we collectively, we love you. We want you here. We need you here. Yeah? Good. And you know I love you. And you know I love you. Did it.